Sarah Walsh from All Fun Cat, and this is the last video in a three part series on how to knit cables. So, in our first two videos, we covered how you knit cables, what they look like, and what special equipment you need. Uh, and the cables that we covered are basic knit over knit cables as well as knit over purl cables, and how holding your stitches in the front or the back affects whether the cables lean to the left or the right. If any of that doesn't sound familiar to you, I would suggest going back and watching the first two videos just to get a refresher of what's going on and then coming back here and watching this one. So this last video is going to cover how cables are represented in knitting patterns and how you read them. Now the reason that this needs a whole video in and of itself is that unfortunately cables don't have a standardized way of being represented in knitting patterns. So what I mean by that is that if you are used to reading knitting patterns, there are very, very common abbreviations that you can be sure will be the same from pattern to pattern, regardless of who wrote them. So for example, K will always mean knit, and P will always mean purl, YO will always mean yarn over, and um, SSK is always slip of knit, K2 tog, always knit two together. And so usually people will explain what these abbreviations mean for people who haven't seen them before, but they're pretty standard. So once you get the hang of them, regardless of who's written a pattern, you can rely on the fact that that's what that uh, abbreviation will mean. The unfortunate thing about cables is that there's no standardized way that people have agreed on, on how to represent them. So you can't just go into a pattern and see some form of letters and numbers in a combination and know exactly what that means for cables. The nice part about that is that in any pattern that involves cables, there should be a key somewhere that explains what the abbreviation means. Um, so even if it looks totally unfamiliar to you, you can go to that key or the notes of the pattern and see what the person's talking about. But the unfortunate thing is that you have to do this for every cable pattern that you're looking at um, because they differ from pattern to pattern. So there are some sort of standard ways that people represent cables in patterns. So I'm going to take you through those. So at least if you see them, then you will be a little bit more familiar with them. Uh, but do make sure that you double check in the key before you start knitting your cables to see what it is that that specific pattern the writer means by that abbreviation. Um, so I'm going to take you and show you some books um, to show you different examples of how people write some common cable abbreviations. So this is the first example I want to show you. This symbol here is a cable and it is actually the same simple cable that we were doing in the first video. It's a two over two knit cable where you hold the stitches in front. So that's what the F is. So if you ever see a notation that looks like this, a C and then a number and then an F, that means cable, four stitches, holding it in front. And if you take a look here, this is what I was saying, where the pattern itself will tell you what the abbreviation means. So it says slip two stitches onto the cable needle at front, so as in hold it in front, knit two, then knit two from the cable needle. So that's exactly what we were doing in the first video. Um, and this, if you'll remember, results in a cable that falls to the left. The other option is C4B, which means, down, uh, as you see down here, slip two stitches to cable needle at back, so that's what the B stands for, knit two, knit two from cable needle. And that will result in a cable that leans to the right. Now, the other version of this that you see sometimes is either a C4R or a C4L, and that actually says um, cable four leaning to the left or cable four leaning to the right. If you see a C4F or a C4B, that just helps you remember where to hold the stitches. Um, and if you see a C4L or C4R, that just means the pattern writer's emphasis is more on which direction the cables are leaning, but they end up being the same thing. So like I was saying earlier, uh, don't worry too much about the abbreviations. I just wanted to show you because this is very common. So if you ever come across something like this, 
it means that it's over four stitches and it's like we were doing before it's usually half of the stitches go on to the cable needle and the other half stay on the left hand needle so this is the second example that i wanted to show you and the notation for these cables is quite different so this 2 slash 2 RC is actually the equivalent of C4B in the pattern we were just looking at. And what this notation here is trying to do is instead of putting an emphasis on how wide the whole cable is, it's putting an emphasis on the number of stitches that are crossing over each other. So in this case, it's saying two stitches are crossing over a two stitch background to the right. And that's what that means. And then the same thing down here. Two stitches are crossing over two stitches to the left. The reason that you want to write out something like that is because not all cables happen on even numbers of stitches with uh, the same number of stitches crossing over each other. So if you take a look over here, this is where this notation actually starts to come in handy. This is saying three stitches are crossing over two stitches to the right and this P part means that the background is pearls and the C just means cable. So putting all that all together, you get this part down here, which is again, it's showing you what it actually wants you to do. It's saying slip two stitches to the cable needle, hold them in the back, knit three, and then purl two from the cable needle. So this purl two becomes the background. And then same down here, it's three stitches are crossing over two background stitches to the left and the backgrounds are purl. So slip three to the cable needle, hold it in front, purl two, and then knit three from the cable needle. This slash notation is becoming more and more popular, but the way that they indicate the right and the purl and the cable is very different. I've seen these written out quite differently a lot of the time. So just make sure you go to the key or the legend or whatever it is uh, that the designer has included to let you know what they want you to do with the cables and there'll always be an explanation. The final thing I want to talk to you about is charts. So this here is the chart for the example we've been working on the whole time. This is our swatch. Um, it's the cables that we've been working on. And if you take a look at them side by side, you'll notice that the final swatch ends up looking a lot like this picture over here. So you've got these two columns going up the sides. There are crosses every so often. And then they both they branch out to the left and the right. And then you end up with these columns going up the middle and the sides. And there's a fat crossover here in the middle. Charts are very, very common in cable knitting patterns. I don't want to go into too much detail about how exactly they work, but basically each row is one row of your knitting and each box is a stitch and they come with a legend to show you what each of the different symbols mean. Uh, I just want to encourage you, if you ever come across a pattern that has a chart in it, don't be scared off. I was scared off for a really, really long time. I just refused to use patterns with charts in them. And once I started getting the hang of them, they're actually very helpful because it gives you an overall picture of what you're actually doing. If you con contrast it here, this is actually the written out version of this pattern up here and it's a lot less easy to understand what's going on you can follow stitch by stitch and row by row like normal and every so often you'll hit the cable uh, notation and then you'll have to look it up in the legend and the abbreviation until you get the hang of what that pattern wants you to do with that particular cable but it's helpful indicating like row by row and stitch by stitch what it is you're meant to be doing, but it doesn't give you an overall picture of where you're getting to like this cable chart does here. So part of the reason too why I'd really encourage you to go ahead and try and understand charts if you come across them in cable knitting patterns is that I think out of all the knitting charted knitting patterns I've seen, cables are where the chart makes the most sense because the chart itself looks most similar to the final product that you end up with. And so it helps you understand why it is you would even bother using a visual representation of your pattern like this, as opposed to just looking at the written instructions. So that's it. Uh, that's all I have for you on how to do cables. I hope that was a decent introduction to both how to knit them and how to read them in a pattern. And if you have any questions or 
want to find me, uh, stick around and just look at the last couple of seconds of this video because it has my contact details, how to find me on Instagram and my website. And I hope you feel like you can start knitting cables because I personally love them and I'd love to see all of your creations. So go forth and happy knitting. Have a good time with your cables. Thank you.